Hey, it's Mac with PriceActionTradingSystem.com. It's Friday, December the 7th. Um, we had a nice little channel down, a break of the trend line, a couple of moves down to a new low, then a reversal and a channel up. And this was standard price action trading rules, fairly straightforward. Lots of entries, a few of them where you could catch runners. Um, it got a little dicey in the, you know, after 10 o'clock. And it's Friday, too. But that's been kind of the standard, you know, for the last week or two is that, you know, all the movements in the morning and then the afternoon is anybody's guess. But let's let's go back and talk about each of the trades here. Um, the market opened right in here. We had a double top, a lower low, and then we had two legs up to a lower high. And look at that real bearish bar. You got to love that setup right there. Chance to get short right there below that bar. Price has moved down. Any runners would have survived off of that. You might even consider, you know, you got a double top here too, uh, almost a triple top. So you might even consider going short below that bar if you were real aggressive. But it was better to wait until you had some. I like to wait on these kind of bars for, you know, real clear, clarity. And then there's no doubt. And look at that move. And you, if you. Got short right up in either one of those spots. You could have ridden this all the way to the lows today. And um, it's a pretty good trade. Then you got another chance right here. You got a double bottom. This is a pullback to the EMA. Notice it's a first entry short, second entry short. Um, with this break higher that turned lower, you could have gone short right there, which is what I did. Or you could have waited for this bar and gone short right there. Either way, you're getting short a little bit low, but it's a breakout pullback short. So that makes it, you know, a little different. And easy scalp, no runners on this one. And it just was too risky by the time you got to this one. That's a nice, huge bearish bar, but all that is is just a trap to, you know, and look what happened as soon as it got, they ran, everybody stops, and then it sells off again. That's pretty standard. Um, you know, you should have drawn your trend line off those first two swings and drug it down, and then it's pretty obvious, you know, that that's, you know, you don't want to be getting short there. There's not much room. It could always work, but it's not worth risking it. So uh, just wait for the next chance, and then you get your next one up here. Uh, you got a couple of swings here, but this is one leg up, a pullback, and then the second leg up. And this is your first break of the trend line. So you're looking for a retest. You're just waiting on a setup, and then you get this big bearish bar right here. Um, I was a little leery of that one, so I waited, and, and then we had this one. Another try to go up, and then you got some matching highs across here. Um, and when it broke below that bar again, that's a second entry short. So I went ahead and took it right there. Looking back at it now, um, you probably were better to wait on this breakout pullback short because look how it got hung up in there. But, you know, you keep your stop above the signal bar, and everything's good to go. And that's why we trade with the trim because you can be a little early and you can make some mistakes. And it doesn't always hurt you where if you're counter trend trading and you're too early or you get it wrong, you get stopped out. So um, I like this setup, the second entry, because it's really uh, a double top. It's two tries, one try, then it tested it again, failed, and turned down. So when it broke below there, I went short. I almost exited it right here, but I just really felt good that we were going to test that low, um, and we did. And... Uh, then, you know, if you didn't get in here, you had another chance. To, no, no runners were probably worked out on this one, depending on, it depends on where you entered, really. But you had another chance to enter right here on this breakout pullback short. Because of all this overlap, you got a breakout pullback and then another chance to get short. And you got to be thinking we're going to make a new low and probably test this low. And off it went. And um, just remember when you're entering these trades, you want to enter closer to the EMA when you're pulling back to the EMA. You can't enter away away from the EMA. Uh, you want to wait till you've had a pullback that kind of pulls back towards the MA, uh, EMA or the trend line or whatever. And um, so this, I like this setup. It broke higher. A lot of people probably thought that was going to be the low and that we'd come back and test this high. And it was a trap and just a breakout pullback short. And that one dropped pretty quickly. Enough to get you a couple of points out of it because once you went into this overlap, now you've had a break, uh, you're making a higher low, and you got two legs back. And this one, he, uh, this one here, you probably could have uh, you could have gone short on this below this um, 
doji but it was all it's always better to wait for a trend bar in your direction and that was right here so you could have gone short right there um another easy scalp you didn't get any runners here because it had two legs back again but look at this big bearish bar and this was the final kind of capitulation on this move and then it was uphill ever since but let me show you how i entered on this trade when it broke higher right here this is a fairly big bar that looks very bullish and so a lot of people got trapped long right there when it went above that bar uh, a lot of people thought we probably already had two legs down to a new low but when it broke higher right there and started turning down, I went ahead and put my entry stop right there. And so it triggered and it instantly dropped on down to that new low. And um, and then you got another two legs down. And this one worked pretty quickly. It was a, a little bit questionable because you're um, close to these lows. Okay, I had an interruption there. I'm sorry. I think we were talking about this trade. Um, and so this was your final short. And there was a nice, there was an opportunity to go long right here. I kind of liked this trade, but I was so busy uh, managing my shorts at this point, trying to figure out where to exit down here, that I did not get long right here. So I missed this trade. But if you saw that trade, uh, looking back, if I just if I hadn't have been short trying to exit shorts, I would have definitely been going long right there. Um, then you got like a little two-legged correction that comes back and test this, but it's just so much overlap right there. Um, I thought we were going to get another setup for a short right here, but it just didn't. You see how it didn't materialize, and prices worked higher so you might have considered going long here since it's two legs back but that's so much overlap that i just didn't like it um the better entry was down here way away from the ema this is close to the ema just not a good setup it would have worked if you saw it and took it um i would say it's probably okay but i didn't like it and then you just got hung up again and you broke higher you got a double top here and again, you might have thought short, but with all this overlap, um, you know, you're better off to wait on a lower entry and see if we get a lower high or, or a higher low, I guess you should say, from this low. Because now we're made one, two, three higher highs. And so now if we can get a, a couple of higher lows, so you got one higher low, and this is a higher low. This one actually is lower than this one, but that's just a trap. You notice you got the double bottom there. And, and they're really coming back and testing this low right here one more time. And you can see that. And let me show you why. This one could have been considered questionable too, but let me show you why I like this trade. Um, you had all this overlap, and you broke lower first, and then you turned up. And I had my order right here to go long, hoping it would go ahead and trigger before it closed, but it didn't. Um, so, But I hung with it anyway because notice how the closes are getting higher each time and you're getting lots of stems down here you got this little one tick trap so you probably got some shorts still hanging on right here hoping for another leg down and it broke higher and, and for a minute there I got a little concerned because I thought it was going to go lower but you got a pretty tight stop right there but it broke higher went higher um, no runners here pulled back and you ha you just about had to take that one with that big bullish bar. That's that's you know now you um, you should have been able to ha find your channel too by now. Um, I you know you know I wasn't sure if it was right up through here, but you got to go off these highs right here. And I just kind of drew that across there to begin with and drug it down. You can see that, and you're getting those bounces there. And um, so I really like that to the long side that we were going to come back to the high side here. And But if you missed that one, you had another chance to get in right here. And, of course, you had to keep your stop down here lower. You might have skipped this trade just because it's such a big bar. But usually what I'll do if I don't have feel good about going long above it, I'll drop my limit order back in here. And that would have worked perfectly if you'd have got about half of it. It would have pulled you back, uh, triggered your order and you could have ridden that right on up or even if you entered right here or right there it still worked and then from then on the rest of the day it's just it's too late in the day it's friday look there you know from 12 o'clock on there weren't 25 bars hardly there's just no volume 
and uh, you know all the trading's kind of in the morning all the moves are in the morning and then it just you know then it just doesn't have any real sense of direction in the afternoon and that's been pretty common and back out you can see that again but it was a fairly standard day you had your trend channel working down you had a break a couple of legs down to a new low you reversed and you stayed in this channel pretty much all afternoon and this channel was a little bit difficult to find um, you know, if you drew it off the first two swings, then you're thinking maybe that's the channel. Um, and you really did kind of have a channel there. But uh, we kept going higher and making these higher lows. And really, I was kind of playing this more like a um, trading range here at this point than I was this channel. And uh, But the channel, you know, if you stayed with it, you were able to find the channel. If you keep drawing your lines, you should be able to find them eventually. And then you can see that's... There's no doubt that's the channel right up through there, and uh, it's fairly obvious, pretty easy to see, and really it's just, oops, it's just coming off these closes down here like that right there, and that happens sometimes, you know, sometimes the trend lines are, are you find them off the closes better than you do um, the stem, so I'm constantly rechecking my lines and double checking because sometimes you'll think you found something and it's a little bit different, and uh, so, you know, always play around with your lines, double checking them and rechecking them and looking just to make sure you got them right. Because if you're trading, you know, once you get the lines right, it's all fairly obvious and you can't hardly make any mistakes. If you just trade off the lines, um, you just about can't go wrong. And you can see that, you know, if you found this line coming up through here, every time it touched it, you could have bought. And there were one, two, three, four off that line. On the high side, and there were one, two, three, four, five off the high side. Now, you see they're a little more, more tricky. Um, if you went short there, you might have got stopped out before. Then it went lower, and then it went higher again. So you, that's why you don't counter trend trade. All the good trades are going to be off the trend line until you get a break of that trend channel line or you get a major overshoot. And I wouldn't call any of these overshoots up through here. Uh, it's pretty standard, so, um, and you can see coming down off the trend line. Of course, you wouldn't have had this trend line here yet, um, but then there's your first break. Uh, there's another break right there. Um, generally, you, when you get a trend line, you're going to get more touches. You're going to get opportunity for more touches than you than you did on this way down. This was pretty quick, um, but you got two legs down, a break, and then almost two more legs and, and we didn't even talk about it but I'm sure there's your first leg and then you got this correction in here and you see your second leg it's pretty close it didn't quite get there uh, which would have been this target in these lows here um, we didn't quite get there so but anyway it's Friday I'm gonna wrap it up I'm gonna get out of here earlier today um, hope you had a good trading week Hope you have a great weekend, and I'll see you next week. This is Mac with PriceActionTradingSystem.com.